when you enter into a relationship, one that is going to be serious, it's going to be a real commitment, there's going to be a union, and even more husband and wife. And when we talk about husband and wife, we talk about putting even more emphasis on any subject that we can base on relationships. A lot of times we'll find that we have to make some sacrifices. And I'm not talking about not staying out as late as she used to. Of course, that may be part of it too. But I'm talking about sacrificing people. You know, I come up in, you know, the hood where we were seemingly like a big family. And I uh, I have a lot of uh, sisters that aren't my blood sisters. And I have a lot of respect and love for them. Um, I know their struggle. I was there when they struggled. They were beside my struggle. Um, some of them have uh, been in relationship with you know, some of the guys that I grew up with as well and our relationship ourselves has been nothing but innocence and they confided in me and I confided in them for a period of time and it was all normal and it was all innocence, you know, where we were talking about the relationship they were in, any kind of struggle might have been financial at the time, dealing with their children, just wanting my opinion, my advice, and again, vice versa. But then when you get in a relationship, with someone and y'all begin to merge and as innocent as you know your relationship or your friendship is with sis and them that person that you emerge in this relationship with may not feel the same way for whatever reason and I think it goes both ways men too you know you have the the mechanic you you you, you got the the landscaping guy you know the clergyman whether it's the preacher the priest the pastor all these people are in your life. And then, you know, you begin to merge this relationship. And in spite of these people titles, your man may have some issue with, you know, the relationships that you have. And rightfully so, because no matter what hat we wear, no matter whether we are, you know, a minister or whether we are a teacher or whatever, this it's flesh under there. That's flesh. And if we talk about a heterosexual relationship, then you're dealing with the opposite sex, people of the opposite sex that may be attracted to you. And I think a lot of times men get a bad rap for being jealous or insecure when it comes to situations like this. But the truth is that we're really just territory. We're supposed to protect our household. We're supposed to protect our queen. And if we feel the need to start being protective in that manner, because we may feel a little threatened. You know, you got a 6'2", 180-pound solid mechanic that's calling you the next morning talking about, is the car all right? And your guy is like, why is he asking you is the car all right? If it wasn't, wouldn't you be calling him? You know? Or the, the, the woman, let's just call her Sunshine. The woman, Sunshine, who, you know, does your dude's dreads and get them all nice and neat or his cornrows or whatever. Of course, that wouldn't be me. I'm a scar head. But this woman, she been doing your, 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 your guy dreads for years. And he met you. And she look like sunshine. <laughs> uh, she done his hair yesterday and she called him today to ask him, is his hair all right? How's his head feel? And you like, why is she asking you about your hair today when she done it yesterday and you let her know you were satisfied with it? And you like, no, nah, she was just, you know how when you be beating your hair, she was just saying, you know, was it throbbing? Wrong answer, dude. You don't want to tell your woman that another woman is asking whether any of your heads are throbbing. So, my point is, things change when you create a union. And I kind of learned the hard way at the risk of my relationship. Because, you know, man, we all come up in the hood. We've been in the struggle. I'm down for my sisters. They need me. And I know this innocent. No. Nah, I'm, I'm about to see what's up. She got something on her mind. But I don't realize how I'm making 
my partner feel. And if anybody want to understand this even more, all I do is ask you to use your God-given imagination and put yourself in those shoes. And some of you might be like, oh, I ain't got no problem with, you know, the, the, the mechanic or the preacher or the uh, 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 sunshine. Because maybe, you know, you're that confident in your relationship. You're that secure with yourself. Maybe you and your woman got an open relationship. I don't know. I'm speaking to the people who I believe that can definitely relate to this. And I believe that they would be the majority. So, hey, they say if it ain't for you, let it fly by. But if you can identify with what I'm saying, I can tell you from my own experience, being on both ends, being a person that's confiding in a, a woman that's in a relationship and being a man that a woman outside of my relationship is confiding in. We have to get to the point where we understand what makes sense and what's, what doesn't. What's normal and what isn't. And what I mean by that is this. If you're calling me 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, then that's not normal. If you're calling me 10 o'clock at night and I'm laid up with... My folks, you know, we looking at a movie, we chilling. Because you want to vent about what some guy done to you or what you're going through. That may not be appropriate. Emergency, you can call me 3 o'clock in the morning. Life in danger, you need some help. And for whatever reason, I would be the one to help you, you can call me. But I don't know where that makes sense at because there's a whole lot of other people and officials you can call for certain things. And a man in a relationship nor a woman in a relationship should be someone outside the relationship who aren't blood family shouldn't be their first go-to. Uh, that, that shouldn't be. There should be someone else. But again, we want to get to a point where we understand what, what's normal. Normal is a text like, hey, I'm kind of going through something right now. Do you mind if I call? And in that sense, it gives you the option as to how you want to deal with this. You may say, is it an emergency because I'm with my folks and we chilling. But someone who just outright calls, don't care what time, don't care what relationship, um, doesn't ask about your partner when they call and say, oh, where's she? Tell her I said hi. Like showing respect, showing awareness that I am conscious that you are in a relationship. I just got something on my mind. Matter of fact, you might want to put me on speaker be so I might want some input from your partner. It has to be that way. In spite of, that person may not know your partner like that or feel as confident. But when they come and they step into their household, be it they physically crossing that threshold, be it they uh, coming by way of phone or what, they have to understand that what this, whole, this household is about. It's about a union. And if the two haven't become one yet because they've gotten married, then they are working towards becoming one. So we start. We need to start dealing with them as if they are one. And so these are the sacrifices. Sometimes they are people that you're going to have to sacrifice for the sake of your relationship and your union. And those people that you sacrifice, if they were in a committed relationship that was healthy, I doubt if they will want you coming at them or their mate will want you coming at them, male or female, at any given time on any given subject. Taking time and space away from what's going on in your house, 
household, be it children involved, so forth and so on. And when we talk about clergymen, I think we need to consider one of the reasons why a lot of men, the ratio of men and women in the church is just not equal. A lot of times, man don't want to go to church. Well, part of it is because he don't want to give his 10% of his income up because that's the weed, the uh, cigarettes, and the beer money. <laughs> and that's just a joke. But a lot of times it's because the woman will talk more and direct him more to the preacher than she uh, magnifies him himself in his household. What would the preacher do? What would the pastor do? Um, well, Bishop such and such said this. And sometimes we as men, in spite of our respect for the man of God, you know, we still have some ego with that too. And it kind of pushes us away because it looks like you're looking more up to him than, uh, than, than me. And someone saying, well, she shouldn't be looking up to the preacher or you like that. She should be looking to God. We know why we go to church and we know that it's all about God and we uplift God and we pray to God and so forth and so on. But I'm talking about when everything or a lot of things just become surrounded by um, what the preacher would do, how they would think I'm going to consult in him. When the Bible itself says the man or the husband is the, 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 the priest. He's the priest of the household. And your man may not be eating meat in a sense of very knowledgeable at the time. But that preacher, that pastor, at one point he wasn't evil. So you got to grow with your guy. But let him know I honor you and I'm going to put you first. Even if you do have to sacrifice that pastor or that preacher. And sacrifice not in the men of cutting them off, of course. You want leadership in your life. You and your husband. But you have to let your husband know that, hey, we are first. So, it's very important for us to understand that when we come into a union and we begin to build and design our life to be together, then no one else comes first. It doesn't matter what title that they hold. And anybody outside of that that doesn't understand, not only is that not your problem, but this is my reminder. That division is near. So excuse me, but it's for a good purpose. It's not your problem that they may not understand. And I encourage them to put themselves in your situation. And that man's wife probably wouldn't want him um, being interrupted by other women. And that 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 woman's husband wouldn't want her being interrupted by other men at any given time or being put before him or her. So these are the things that we have to focus on and these are the sacrifices that we have to make in order to have growing, healthy, flourishing relationships and that's the way that you really Merge and build bonds, knowing that pff, I don't care who he is, what he do, who she is, what she do, how long I known her before I met you. You first. Break the cycle.